Hey there, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well today. Um, in the past, we've taken a look at a few different dashboard options. Uh, in fact, I think I've even got an entire playlist with all of the different dashboards that we've looked at over the past few years. And recently a new one came across my radar and it's called Glance. And I know why they called it that, but I think there's gonna be some confusion with uh, the monitoring solution called Glances. But I think Glance will make sense once we actually take a look at our dashboard here. This video is sponsored by eWin Racing and their Flash XL size upgraded ergonomic gaming and office chair. As the name implies, this is the XL and it's meant for chair enthusiasts, ranging from five foot seven to seven feet tall and supports up to 550 pounds. This is a big chair that has all of the creature comforts you would expect from a quality product. The Flash XL features Brissa Ultra PU leather for its breathable performance fabric and proprietary ventilation system to keep you from getting all hot and sweaty while you're doing everything from fragging bad guys in your favorite game to scouring the internet for your next new thing to test out in your home lab. The armrests are attached with magnets for easy replacements if you ever need to do that, and they're adjustable in multiple directions so you can dial in the chair to get the most out of your ergonomic setup. The seat and the back are firm, but not hard, so you can sit for long periods of time without worrying about your butt and legs falling asleep while you're getting the support that your body needs. It also comes with memory foam, headrest, and lumbar pillows for maximum comfort. And the headrest is magnetic, so you can set it where you want without those bothersome straps getting in the way and complicating things. To fully dial in the comfort of the Flash XL, there are two different lumbar knobs that allow you to adjust the 4D lumbar support to fit your unique body shape. Be sure to check out the link in the video description to get more information and a discount code to pick up an eWin racing chair for yourself and save some cash in the process. So with that little introduction out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at my instance of Glance dashboard, and then we'll take a look at the GitHub repository and then actually getting this set up. It's actually pretty easy. So here we are, we're on my desktop. This is my Glance instance for the sake of this tutorial. Um, and basically it's, it's broken out into three columns. We've got a small column, a main column, and then another small column. I don't know if main is the right word. We'll, we'll come back to that. But basically two small columns and then a, a kind of a full width column uh, with the remaining space on the page. Anyway, uh, I've, I've been able to define what I want in each column. So I've got a calendar and weather in the first narrow column over here. Then I've got a, a YouTube RSS kind of thing where I've plugged in the creators that I want to follow, again, for the sake of this tutorial. And uh, then anytime they release a new video, it will show up here. And then I can click the title and it will take me over to that YouTube page and I can watch it. Below that, we've got uh, some RSS feeds, one from Serve the Home, uh, as well as some other stuff, self-hosted, uh, DB Tech Reviews, of course, in here as well. And we can see that it's showing me five, but if I open this up, there are more in there. Of course, below that, we've got uh, Hacker News. That's kind of one of their default plugins or whatever you want to call it. And again, we've got, you know, five <clears throat> showing here. And if I expand that out, we get a bunch more. Uh, there's actually a setting to determine how many will show up in each of those different uh, sections. We'll talk about that when we talk about the deployment process and the configuration process, that sort of thing. Then over here on the right hand side, I've got r slash self hosted from Reddit, r slash Casa OS, obviously also from Reddit, and the same for r slash Zima board. And again, here we're showing three, but if I open it up, it shows me several more. And again, we can configure those numbers very, very easily. So this is kind of the gist of how it works or, or what you can expect from it. You can change colors, you can change layouts, you can change, you know, obviously what content is filtered into each of these different sections. Um, you know, up here, for example, I've got home and I've got second page with a completely different layout, same general content, but different layout just for demonstrative purposes. So you can see that there are different ways that you can lay this out. Um, and, and again, super, super easy to set up. Also, because I know this is going to come up um, because people like to take this kind of stuff on the go with them because you're basically curating your own content feed with this, which I love. Uh, Glance is actually mobile ready. And in fact, it's beyond mobile ready. They've done a really good job with this. Uh, if I minimize this down so that we're in kind of a mobile uh, uh, width here, I can bring this down even farther. You know, and we can scroll up and down and we can see, you know, like the, the YouTube stuff, the RSS feeds. This is obviously page two. But if we come down, uh, we can go down, we can, uh, we've got options down here, if I can get my words out. So we've got, uh, we've got, this will take us back up to the top, I think, just like that. 
I don't know what that one does. Oh, this one takes us to, oh, it's, oh, oh, it takes us through different sections. That's neat. I've actually just discovered this. So we're, we're experiencing this together at the same time. So we've got some different options as far as what we can see down here. Uh, we can also, so this is the home page. So left column, middle column, right column. That's cool. I'd really dig that. And then on the second page, again, same thing, but just left column and right column. So we can kind of break those down uh, and see each individual column that way. I, I didn't even know that was a thing. That's really clever. I dig that a lot. Um, and of course, if I click the little hamburger menu, I can go back to the home page. And here we are on the main content section. So that is, uh, again, we were experiencing that in real time together. I really dig their mobile feature there. They did a really, really good job with that. So I'm, I'm stoked to be able to share that with you as well. Um, but I think with that said, let's go ahead and jump over to their GitHub page so we can talk about a couple of things. And then we'll all show you how easy it is to get it installed and configured, that sort of thing. Okay, so here we are on the Glances or the Glance app slash Glance GitHub page. There's a lot of G's in that. Anyway, so you can obviously come here, look through the code, get an idea of what you're about to put on your server if you decide to go this route. If we scroll down, we've got, you know, installation, configuration, themes. You can do some theming here. Uh, we've got kind of an example, but we've already taken a look at my example. Uh, features, uh, we've got various widgets for RSS, subreddit, weather, bookmarks, hacker news, lobsters, which I wasn't aware of until I got into this project a little bit. Uh, latest YouTube videos, clocks, calendar stocks, iframes, Twitch channels, and top games, GitHub releases, repository overviews, a site monitor, and search box. Now, I haven't played with all of these different features just yet, um, but that's okay, I think. Like, I've got it kind of set up the way I want it set up, and of course, you guys can add the different widgets and features that you want to your setup. Um, but let's keep scrolling so we can see some more examples of what they've got going on here. Uh, next, they've got this whole themable section. Um, and you can kind of see the different options that they've got by default with their different themes. I, I dig that. Uh, and of course, you can customize those even farther uh, with, with a little bit of tweaking of some color codes, that sort of thing, but super easy. Um, here it says minimal, uh, JS, no bloated frameworks, very few dependencies, uh, ease, or single, easily distributed, um, uh, f less than 15 megabyte binary, which is great. All requests are parallelized, parallelized. There's too many L's in that. Uncached pages usually loaded in approximately one second. Of course, depending on your setup, your internet, that sort of thing. Uh, we've got a configuration section here, which uh, we will definitely want to take a look at. I've got that open in a different tab already. And then there's a pre-configured page also available. If you want to check that out. Again, links to all of this will be in the video description. Um, and then right here, this is this is really why I wanted to bring you to this page, because under installation, it says caution. The project is under active development. Expect things to break every once in a while. Now, the reason I bring this up uh, for, is for, 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 for a few different reasons, I suppose, maybe just a couple. We'll figure this out together. Um, basically, um, I, we, we've talked about a lot of different dashboards and everybody's got different things that they like to do with different dashboards. And for me, being able to set up content feeds and YouTube feeds and RSSs and all of that kind of stuff in one general page so I can get a glance or I can just glance at the page and see what's going on, I love that. Now, however, because this is still in development, things may break, things may change. Um, so this is kind of an early exploratory video of this Docker container. Um, I'm making this on June 4th of 2024, um, and things may change by the time you watch this or, or whether that's in a week or a month or a year. So definitely come back to their GitHub repository if what I'm showing in this video doesn't line up with what you're seeing. So just wanna clear the air on that. Uh, but if we scroll down a little farther on the page, uh, we've got a Docker run and then a Docker compose, whichever preference you have for that. Perfectly acceptable. I know some people, some people have left comments saying that I did it wrong because I did Docker compose, sorry, I did Docker run versus Docker compose in a recent video. Um, do things, how, how, how they make you happy, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. If you wanna do it via Docker run, cool. If you wanna do it via Docker compose, Great, portainer, dockage, I don't care. Just deploy it, check it out, have fun. Um, but basically, uh, what we've got here is we've got our, our Glance service. Our image is Glance app slash Glance, as you would expect. We do have a volume, or we've got three different volumes, one for time zone, one for local time, and then one for a glance.yml file. And they don't, for whatever reason, have that file on this page, and that confused me a little bit, um, but we'll, we'll come back to that. So basically, this is your entire Docker Compose. That's all you have to put on your server, right? So if I do, um, I'm, I'm here in my Proxmox instance. If I do a nano Docker Compose, 
that's it. That is my whole uh, my whole Docker Compose. I didn't change anything other than I just wanted to be on 480 versus 8080, but that's just a preferential thing. Um, but if we come back over and take a look, uh, let's go to their configuration. There's actually a link to that right here in a pre-configured page as well. Um, yeah, same thing. So, so let's go here first. This is near the top of the page for their configuration documentation over on GitHub. We've got intro, we've got pre-configured pages, we've got servers, themes, pages, and columns, and then a bunch of different widgets that you can incorporate into your setup, depending on what you want to do uh, with, with your, with your page, your pages, whatever the case is, you can implement each of these different widgets very, very easily. Um, so basically if we scroll down, here's the intro for a pre-configured page. This is more or less what I built my system off of uh, for, for my little glance installation here. Um, you know, we've got pages, our first page, which is only one page in this instance, uh, is called home. Then we've got columns. Uh, the first one is a size of small. And then under here, we've got widgets for clock and calendar and RSS. Um, then below that, we've also got Twitch channels. So basically all of that would be in your far left column in a very narrow, narrow little strip there. Farther down, uh, we've got a size of full. That's kind of that mid section here. So like this, we left column. This is that full area kind of in the middle there like we talked about earlier. Um, and then of course here, they've got hacker news and then videos from different uh, YouTube creators, Jeff Gearling, Serve the Home, Techno Tim are in there by default. Of course, I added myself and a couple of others. We've also got a uh, another widget in here called Reddit uh, with a subreddit of self-hosted. Now, one of the things that I wish they had done a little bit differently, and I, and I may have I may have been looking at this wrong, uh, it's it's more difficult to get multiple subreddits in here. Like if we take a look at the channels up here for say videos, uh, subreddits don't work that way. You actually have to list out type Reddit, subreddit, self-hosted, duplicate that over and over and over for each of the different self-hosted or different subreddits you want and then switch the names for each of the subreddits. I'll show you that in mine. Um, and over here on the right, again, we've got another small uh, with the wedge, uh, bleh, widget type of weather and then a location and then uh, stock markets and all of the different symbols and names that you want for that. Um, so that's kind of the gist of what that looks like. Um, and that's fine. Again, that's how I started, but then I started playing around with it and, and took mine a bit farther than that. So let's go ahead and take a look at my glance.yml file. So what we're gonna do is come back over to my Proxmox. I'm gonna exit out of this. I'm gonna clear my screen and I'm gonna do nano uh, glances.yml. So up at the top, uh, the first uh, thing I've got up here is my theme, the background color, the primary color, and the negative color. Those are all, I believe, HSL. Uh, color values, so you'll need to manipulate those to find uh, the colors that you want for your setup. You can take theming even farther. Again, that's in the documentation and a bit outside the scope of this video. Again, this is kind of a just an exploratory video because as the developer has stated, things are probably going to change as things continue to be developed. So just something to keep in mind there. But over here uh, under pages, our first one is called home. We've got a column of small with calendar uh, and weather, just like we saw over on their demo. Uh, of course, I changed my units to imperial, otherwise it defaults uh, to metric, which I get, um, but I am an American and I, uh, imperial makes more sense in my brain because I've been using it for 40 years. Uh, and then of course, below that, Colorado Springs, Colorado, United States. Again, all of this is in their documentation on how to do each of these different things. So that's my left column. Uh, that we can see right under here, calendar, weather, just that simple. Um, and if we come back over to this, uh, our next si uh, column is a size of full with uh, widgets and then videos, and then I gave it a title. I added some creators in there, their channel IDs, not their channel names, super important distinction. Again, that's also listed in their documentation if you're not sure how to get those things. Um, below that, we've got a type of RSS with a limit of 10 but it collapse after five. So what does that mean? If we come over here, we're looking at our RSS. We got one, two, three, four, five. That's the cutoff or the limit or whatever, whatever they said there. What did they say? Uh, the collapse after. That's the five that we defined there. And of course, if I open this up, there's five more. So we get a total of 10 there. The same is also true for Hacker News. We've got five, and if I open this up, then we get even more. Uh, and we can see that represented, um, do, 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 RSS, 
Um, oh, where did that go? Oh, type hacker news. I guess that is the default of five and 10. I didn't actually define that for the limit and the collapse and that sort of thing. Hacker news is just kind of one of those default things that's in there. Um, so I left it. I kind of dig it. I haven't spent a lot of time on there, um, but it's there if you want to check it out. And of course, over here on the right or the, the, the next column, which would be the far right, size small widgets, uh, Reddit, uh, subreddit self-hosted limit, collapse after three, um, so we're going to get 3 and 15, but then you'll see down here, I also did another type, Reddit, subreddit, cost OS, limit 15, collapse after 3. Same thing down here uh, with the Zima board subreddit, um, and, and those are all obviously reflected like I show over here, um, where we see 1, 2, 3, but if I open it up, there's 12 more. Same thing with all of these others over here on the right side. So you can really drag that page out and really get a lot of information in a very small area by default, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, and then, then if we come over here, um, now we've got name second page. And if we come over to our, uh, to our, to our dashboard here, here is second page, uh, just like we see right there. And this time I took out the, 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 the left column, uh, so that we've just got a full and a right column for this layout. So here we can see columns, size, full widgets. This is all just literally copied and pasted from above. Um, but then after that, uh, we've got a widget, uh, a, a size, small widget, subreddit, all of the same stuff we saw before. But if we come over here again to that second page, here's our full column. Um, and then over here is that small column. It's really just that simple to deploy each of these different things in the Glance app dashboard. I really dig it. Um, and I guess the only thing that you need to know about this, other than looking through the documentation, is that if you come over here and let's say, um, 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 let's come up to here. Let's say, let's say I wanted to name this uh, something else. My second page, right? Control O, Enter, Control X. And if I refresh this page over here, uh, nothing happened. Uh, all you've got to do if you make changes to your glances.yaml file um, is just do a, um, a Docker compose restart. Like so. And just that fast, we can refresh this. Oops, because I changed the name, the slug changed. Uh, so let's refresh. There's my second page and the URL slug changed as well. So that's also something to keep in mind there um, is that if you change the name, the, the URL will change as well. And I guess that makes sense. Just know that if the page you thought you had disappeared, <clears throat> that's why. But that's it, like that. that's really it. I just wanted to show uh, the glance uh, dashboard. Again, it's still in development, but I wanted to show you guys because I know that uh, you guys seem to like dashboards quite a bit. They're fairly popular over on Reddit as well. And uh, so I thought this would gain some traction and maybe show some people a new dashboard that they weren't aware of. Uh, this actually popped up in a, uh, a Docker group over on Facebook that I just joined recently. So super stoked to see that and have a chance to check it out and share it with you guys. Uh, I would love to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Um, if you want to support them, definitely go give their, uh, their GitHub page a star. You just scroll up here to the top. I'm not signed in, but uh, they've got 5.9 thousand stars. I'd love to see that number go way, way up if you guys can help out with that. Um, I don't know these guys. They don't know I'm making this video, but I like the project and hope that they get some recognition. Um, if you want to support the channel here, obviously like and subscribe. That's the easiest, cheapest way to do it. But if you want to support in other ways, you can become a channel member or a patron or check out any of my other social profiles linked down below, also in the video description. Um, again, everything that we talked about in this video will be linked in the video description. So, so once you're done up here, go, go down there, check that out. There's lots of good information down there. Um, but I think with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Again, I want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.